G'day bloody kids, the vaping fucking bogan back once again. Hope you cunts are doing fan bloody tastic. It's time, it's well over fucking due for a bit of a bog, and that is a bogan video log. So we're just gonna shoot some shit, have a bit of a chit chat, run through some uh, new fucking gear that uh, has come in as being tested, and obviously gonna get a fucking review ski, but uh, we'll give you a little sneak fucking peek and first bloody thoughts, I suppose. We'll have a fucking beer, we'll talk some advocacy, we'll talk about the fair dinkum fuckwits, all the good stuff, news, a bit about what I've been up to, and all of the good stuff. So, uh, without further fucking ado, let's get into it. So, what have I been fucking vaping on, what I'm enjoying? This is not necessarily stuff that is up for review, it's stuff that I have already been reviewing, um, but I'm still fucking enjoying. So, I've got myself uh, the Broadside and the Kennedy 24, sorry, 25 millimeter uh, two poster with the broadside both of which I've reviewed a while back but if you cunts interested what are some of the things that I still fucking vape on and still love well after I've uh, fucking reviewed it well the broadside and the Kennedy would have to be two of my most favorited favorited two of my most favorite fucking uh, devices so I'm still sub my fucking dick off with my Kennedy and the broadside being a 25 millimeter is one of the few mods that I've got my tube mods that will actually fit the 25 Kennedy on there nicely. So uh, yeah, I'm having a little toot on uh, this drip head pink eye. So it's a little number I picked up in my uh, example box. I'm giving it a bit of a test run. And I tell you what, it's a pink lemonade and it's pretty fucking tasty. It's simple, it's basic. It's uh, like, tastes like lemonade icy poles to me, like a fucking, you know, lemonade uh, ice block. Very fucking nice. Bloody beautiful thing, hits really nice and hard, it looks the tits, it's uh, it's a top little fucking device. So, still loving my broadside and my Kennedy, that's something old, but, uh, you know, still doing it. Something new that I've been enjoying would be uh, would be this little number, the Dot Mod. Been uh, vaping the shit out of that. Only got it today, it's a bit of an older one, but it will be getting a review. Vaping some uh, Beetlejuice from Outer World, an Aussie brand. So I'm still loving that, we're going to talk about this in a, in a minute. But that's definitely on the favourites list at the moment. And uh, what else am I fucking enjoying? Ah, oh, this little juice here, another fucking sample box number. Never fucking heard of them. Don't even know if they're a real company. Uh, Yellowberry Road is the juice from uh, Possum Trot. There you go. Yellowberry Road. It's uh, blueberries and lemonade. Another lemonade vape. Oh, I'm liking these lemonade vapes at the moment. I've got it in the Noisy Cricket V2. Well, I've got it in... The Roshman, I think it is, or Roshman, fucking, what is the name of this thing? I've forgotten, I think it's Roshman or Roshman, have I got the box here? There he is. Roshomon, there you go, that's how it's spelled, Roshomon. It's kind of like, uh, I'll save it for the fucking uh, first looks in a bit, but, lemonade and, and blueberries. Really tasty. I'm a fruity cunt, I like fruity vapes, that's what I'm vaping on, so there you bloody go. Let's talk about this cunt though real quick, this little guy here. There you go, fucking check, check, mic one, two. Uh, the Bogan has upgraded his audio. Video is getting all fucked up with the vapor. This room's going to get dutched out because we're going to be here for a while, so excuse me if it gets kind of hazy. But, back to the fucking uh, microphone, yeah. Thought it was about bloody time that I uh, got some proper fucking audio, so I've only spent maybe a total of an hour or less just fucking around with a few different settings, a few distances, hello, hello, just seeing how it fucking sounds. So I'm hoping that this uh, this bog goes well because it's going to be a while and I can't fucking redo the audio, obviously. So uh, yeah, tell me what you think about the audio. If there's any fucking audio files out there, I think that's what you call yourselves and you know about uh, microphones and you know about the Blue Yeti, that's the microphone that I picked up, the Blue Yeti. Uh, then, you know, welcome to leave me a comment and tell me how to fucking sort my shit out. But I think I've got it kind of working okay for the moment. So uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll go with it. Oh, time for a fucking beer though, do kids. What do you reckon? It's starting to get warm down here in South Australia. This little uh, room of mine is upstairs and uh, doesn't have air conditioning. So, yeah, the, the sweat will start over the next few months. An old paper bag. Alrighty-o. So, I do love my stone brewery. I love them. They're fucking fantastic. I think they're in 
San Diego, are they? Yeah, San Diego. So, I love their fucking IPAs. I've had some of their stouts. This one this evening is uh, their uh, collaboration with... So, Stone and fucking Wheaton Wood Stout is the name. There you go. This one here. Wood Stout is what it's called. Fucking Wheaton. Uh, maybe is that the other brewery? I don't know. Let's read what it says on the back there. Uh, it's been three years since we introduced the world to... Uh, Wood Stout. Uh, about a dozen years ago, I had the pleasure of getting to know Will Wheaton. There you go. He reached out as a fan of our beer. Over the years, we kept plotting uh, to brew a beer, and finally it came together in 2013. We brought mutual friend Drew Curtis, founder of uh, Fark.com. Don't know what the fuck that is, but anyway, aboard to uh, round out a three-way collaboration. The Imperial Stout you're holding contains wheat. Will pretty much insisted. Uh, we pay tribute to Drew's Kentucky roots by adding pecans to the mix and partially aging the beer in bourbon barrels. Very nice. The result, nothing short of uh, serendipitous. This is release number four, so I think this is 2016 release. Our decadent staple of HopCon, our annual July celebration of all things geeky and goes back to the original recipe and process we started in 2013. We were honoured to work with uh, Amanda Connor, who lent her illustrative talents for the creation of this year's Woodstout art in exchange for our donation to the Hero Initiative, heroinitiative.org. It's a charity organisation that provides uh, retirement funds for golden age comic book artists. There you go. All right. She's worked on countless comics and characters over the years, including uh, Gargoyles, Vampirella, Power Girl, Silk, Spectre. I don't read comics, so I know Harley Quinn. There you go. There's one she's done. She also co-creator of uh, Gatecrasher and had her art recently featured on The Big Bang Theory. There you go. A fucking lot of info on this one. We also had the honor of working with her husband, Jimmy Palmiotti, who helped with the creative process. He's known for so many things that you either know him or a quick web search will give you a far more insightful than we could fit on the bottle. Okay, so I will have to do the web search. Uh, this beer ages well. Sell yours in the smuggling compartment of uh, Cornelia. What? Fucking more comic stuff I don't understand. All suitable cool and dark space in space. Okay, yeah, you could store your beer in space if you're, uh, is it Elon Musk? Pull it out to share on life day with family or friends, either at uh, a feast table or under the tree of life. So there you go. All right. So sorry about the fucking waffle there, dickheads. But uh, collaboration between Greg Koch, Drew Curtis and Will Wheaton and obviously uh, the dickheads over at Stone Brewery. So it's an imperial or a double stout. Let's fucking get into it, eh? Alrighty, there you go, dickheads. Have a look at that. That is blacker than a politician's heart. Absolutely dark as your mum's butthole. Oh, it smells good. Now, if I remember reading correctly, this is a strong motherfucker. I think it's looking... What's the alcohol content on this bastard? 13 fucking percent. How's your bloody father? 13 percent. Fuck me. That is a... Uh, that's a strong drop, dickheads. So uh, look, we uh, we'll probably get through most of this during the uh, during the bog. So if I'm a little bit fucking slurry or sway at the end of it, well, you know bloody why. But smells quite bourbony. Definitely got some uh, very stouty kind of notes there. Some coffee, a little bit of chocolate, but yeah, very bourbon. I guess that's coming from the barrels and obviously the bourbon that they've added in there. Don't get any real wheat notes, not much head on it, so uh, fucking cheese dickheads. If you haven't got a bloody pint, pause the, video, pause the video and fucking go and grab one. Don't be a wally. Ooh. Jesus Christ, that is, uh, that's a rich one. That's really nice though. It's uh, definitely quite bourbony on the uh, sort of initial taste. Definitely getting a little bit of a uh, an alcohol sort of burn as she goes down. Coffee notes in there. That was a bit of a piss poor burp, wasn't it? We'll have to try that again. Yeah, it's very rich. Um, deep, deep sort of 
chocolate stout sort of uh, flavors with that bourbon mixed in there. It's got a little bit of a sweetness to it as well. It's definitely got uh, a little bit of a, a caramel toffee kind of sweetness to it, but fuck me, that is absolutely delicious. It definitely tastes strong and rich. Very nice. So fucking lovely. Let's move on. Oh. <clears throat> there we go. There she is. Fucking excuse them why. All right, beer done. Now, now that I've had a beer, maybe I'm able to talk about the advocacy side of things. Now, normally I talk a, a little bit about, uh, obviously, the FDA bullshit and in the United States. Uh, I'm not, uh, you know, always on the pulse with what's happening in the United States. But as you're aware, we've got a, uh, a big problem, some bad fucking shit happening uh, with the FDA. If you're not already aware of it, please hit the links below to uh, the, the various American, uh, you know, organizations that are helping to fight for our right and change things. Hopefully, maybe with a new, uh, you know, president, new uh, bunch of pollies in there, maybe things will be different. I don't know. It seems like uh, some of the other uh, advocates out there have some hope for it. I don't fucking know. But all we can keep doing is fighting and uh, see where it gets us. If we do nothing, then uh, we've got bupkis fucking chance of anything changing. What I really want to talk about though this evening is the South Australian situation. Now we've had some issues happening in Victoria, uh, Queensland and WA both have been absolutely fucked by their governments. Uh, v Victoria managed to have a little bit of a win there. They wanted to bring in some legislation that would have really damaged the industry. They at least got uh, all the existing vape shops to be able to remain as they are. But in South Australia, a while back there was a committee formed. They went around, they spoke to vape shops, they talked shit. Uh, and then they kind of sat on their hands. They didn't really do anything about the fucking legislation uh, that they wanted to bring in. Now, today an article came out in uh, the ever bullshit uh, newspaper that is the advertiser here in South Australia. And uh, basically the article is talking about the new legislation they want to bring in in the new year. And it is looking really fucking bad for South Australians, both for the shops and for the consumers. So... I'll read most of it. I might skip over a few bits. Um, I'll put a link to the article in the description so you can have a bit of a read for it. You may not be able to see it because they've got this uh, bullshit thing where you've got to pay to read articles. So look, um, what I might do is I'll put some screenshots up of the article that way uh, or some text of the uh, copy and paste of the article. So if you can't see it in the link below, you can pause the video and have a bit of a read. But uh, here basically it says e-cigarettes would be banned in non-smoking areas. So the title is Tougher Legislation on Way for E-Cigarettes. Um, e-cigarettes would be banned in non-smoking areas such as outdoor dining venues just like tobacco cigarettes under proposed legislation. Got no issues with that. None of us vapors really want to see uh, you know vaping in non-smoking areas. That's fine. Retailers would not be allowed to sell vaporizers to children which is fine. Again, none of us fucking agree, you know, disagree with that. Nor advertise or promote e-cigarette products. Substance Abuse Minister Lisa Vla Vlahos will release proposed regulations for public consultation in the new year in line with recommendations from a parliamentary committee. It is believed about 20,100... Where do they get that fucking number from? I don't know. South Australians use e-cigarettes. I think it's a lot higher than that. They reckon only 1.2% of the population here in South Australia vape. That's bullshit. We've got more vape shops than any other state in Australia, and that uh, cannot be because we've got only 20,000 vapors. So fuck off. Do your bloody research, you wankers. The battery-operated devices, vaporizers, refillable cartridge, nicotine, just talks about what vaporizers are. We all know what they are. Um been sold in Australia for about four years, but no legislation. Bullshit. Western Australia has banned the sale of vaporizers. Queensland, New South Wales, and the Australian Capital Territory have put restrictions in place. Victoria will regulate devices from August next year. Um, with easy access to e-cigarettes, there is a strong potential for increased use among young people, Miss Vlahos said. Bullshit, Miss Vlahos. Have you not looked at the United Kingdom's research, the Royal College of Physicians? They came out and said that they saw no increase in the use of e-cigarettes amongst 18 to 25-year-olds. Uh, that's absolute rot. People are not vaping that aren't already smoking. The percentage of those that take up vaping that don't smoke is so small, it's not even worth measuring. A parliamentary committee has held uh, an inquiry into e-cigarettes prompted by the concerns by Labor MP Annabelle Diggins. Fuck you, Annabelle, about the potential long-term health risks. 
Miss Diggins said, current laws allow people to use e-cigarettes on the bus or in a workplace, whereas laws preventing people from smoking in these same places have been in place for years. We're not arguing about that. We don't want to vape in places that you can't smoke. This is not the issue. Concerned that government is moving too slowly on the issue, Liberal MP and e-cigarette committee member Vincent Tarsier has flagged he will introduce legislation to Parliament next month to regulate the devices. The bill would prevent the sale of e-cigarettes to children, that's fine, and ban their sale online or by phone. So no online sales in South Australia. The Parliamentary Committee reported in February making 20 recommendations including banning e-cigarettes in areas that tobacco smoking is banned. Again, we agree with that. Preventing the sale uh, to people under the age of 18, we agree with that. Banning advertising e-cigarettes or offering pricing specials or promotions. Calling for more research uh, on the effects of e-cigarettes on users including pregnant women and fetuses, infants and children and people with respiratory illnesses or chronic illnesses. The committee received 142 submissions and took evidence from 11 people, just 11 people, including from tobacco companies, e-cigarette retailers and users and tobacco smokers. Now, I've got no issue with the majority of these regulations. We all agree that we shouldn't sell to kids. We shouldn't be, uh, you know, selling to, um, you know, you know, people shouldn't be vaping if they're pregnant. You know, same as, as uh, you know, if you're fucking smoking, maybe we don't know what the effects might be there. But what we do know is that the Royal College of Physicians in the United Kingdom is fully backing the use of e-cigarettes. You're allowed to vape in hospitals. They are encouraging smokers to take up vaping. They are basically calling it the, uh, you know, the, the life saver of smokers without putting it you know quite in those words but they've said that it's at least 95 percent safer than smoking most of you dickheads already fucking know this you've heard it you've seen the articles the australian government the south australian government doesn't seem to know its asshole from its ear hole and uh just completely ignoring all of this research saying there's not enough fucking research we don't know what's fucking going on bullshit you've had your head up your fucking ass that's why you don't know anything have a look at the uk and please regulate stuff obviously that we you know agree with things like kids and and um you know minors but if you ban the ability to sell online in south australia if you ban vape shops as well and you ban advertising e-cigarettes how the fuck are people supposed to know about vaping how are smokers supposed to find it now all of us you know vapors that are already off it will order from you know sites outside of South Australia, they'll order from sites overseas, that's not going to prevent you and I from vaping. What it's going to prevent is that new vapor, that person that hasn't quit smoking yet, that hasn't uh, found uh, e-cigarettes and, uh, you know, is not going to be exposed to it and not going to be able to try uh, an e-cigarette in a fucking vape store, uh, you know, see for themselves what it's like and what it can do and have someone explain to them how it fucking works and all the ins and outs because it's a, a little bit of a fucking daunting task first venturing into, into vaping and not knowing how it works and what you need to do. So I'm going to put some links below. Uh, I'm going to do some, some little hunting, find some links to these uh, politicians. I'm going to do another video and ask, you know, not only South Australians, not only Australians, but anybody in the goddamn fucking world to email these nitwits and tell them to have a look at the United Kingdom, to have a look at New Zealand and see what's going on over there and see how their governments and their health departments are backing the shit out of vaping because this is absolutely fucking horrendous. Um, that people are going to basically be forced to stay on cigarettes. It's going to cost lives. It's going to cost people, you know, all sorts of uh, terrible health uh, disorders that go along with cigarettes because they won't be available. You know, the the vaping, uh, you know, you know, liquids, the equipment, all of it. I don't. I'm I'm still absolutely fucking fuming. So I'm going to do another video where I'm a little bit more. You know, calm, a little bit more, uh, what's the word, fucking fluid with the words and really give you guys some direction in terms of uh, what you can do to help us South Aussies out and help my own home fucking state because I live here and I fucking care about my local South Australians and I want to see more of them quit smoking and get off the vapes, uh, get onto the vapes. So look, I'll put some links and I'll do another video and uh, if you can, anywhere in the world, take a few minutes, email these fuckwits, you know, I'll give you some dot points and, uh, you know, show you what you can do but this is absolutely... Uh, devastating for South Australia if, if this goes through. So I'm going to shut up now and get on to a little bit more vaping positive stuff. But um, please, hit some links below. Hit the new Nicotine Alliance. Support them. They're our best bet. They're like our Australian Kassar, you know, Australian Not Blowing Smoke. Those sorts of organisations are all, you know, represented in, in one by the new Nicotine Alliance here in Australia. 
and uh, we need to band together because it's a global community. And uh, you know, as I said, I've been advocating for uh, you know help everywhere else in the world. It's time for you dickheads to uh, do a little bit for uh, us South Aussies. All righty, cunts. Fucking cheers. Let's get on with it. Rightio. So where the fuck was I? <sighs> First looks and upcoming products for review. Let's talk about some stuff I'm a little bit excited about, stuff that I've been enjoying. Let's uh, let's have a little chit chat. So what have I got? Well, look, I know a lot of you've been interested in the uh, the Tesla Touch. This little fucker right here, the touch screen mod from Tesla. Uh, it's got some pros, it's got some cons, you know, it's debatable whether we need touch screen mods in, uh, in, in the world. I personally, you know, I've reviewed the, um, the, the Smock G Priv and the, um, what's you might call it, the, the fucking Minikin V2. I've got the Tesla Touch here. The big screen touchscreen mods, I don't really care for them, mainly because I don't need a big bright screen just to adjust my wattage, choose my fucking coils and all that kind of crap. But, that's what it looks like. It's got a bunch of different backgrounds that you can change on it. So, that's one thing that it has over the G Priv. Uh, however, they've done ridiculous stuff like uh, put, put white text, and if we wait for the camera to focus, white text... All right, see your wattage there is in white and the background is yellow. What fucking numpty thought it was a good idea to put white text on a yellow background? I tell you what, that's absolutely fucking ridiculous. Everybody knows that is a, uh, a terrible color scheme to try and read any kind of text on. So that's my biggest gripe. The other thing is the screen never turns off, basically. It'll turn off after 15 seconds of, of inactivity, but as soon as you vape, the screen comes on. Vape's pretty nice. I like the menu system. The locking system on it's really good. As soon as you hit the fire button, the screen locks, so you can't you can't adjust anything while you're vaping. However, the screen stays on, and that's going to burn through your batteries. It's also pointless. Why do we need the screen on when we're vaping? The Smock had a really good system where you could lock the screen off and continue vaping without the screen on. Why the fuck haven't we done that, Tesla? So I really like to see an update from Tesla on this one. So far. You know, it's it's like a for me, you know, six out of ten. They've done some good stuff. They've done some bad stuff. Um, but overall, it it vapes well, and it's you know, it's got some pros if you're into touchscreen mods. So I'll probably get to that one next week for review. That is the Tesla Touch mod. <laughs> Does 200 watts if you want to know temp control or that bullshit. All right. Let's talk about the Noisy Cricket V2 and the Rochamon RDA. Uh, the Noisy Cricket V2, look, again, has some has some great pros to it. I like the form factor. I do like uh, the shape of it. It's a 25 millimeter sort of tapering down a little bit to like maybe 22 where your battery is. But um, the 25 does allow you to run some fatter RDAs, so I do like that. <laughs> However, the potentiometer, now what they've done... Let's start, you know, let's, let's go back a couple of steps. What they've done from the Noisy Cricket, you know, V1 to the Noisy Cricket V2, they've gone from just a straight series mod, which is what the Noisy Cricket was, 8.4 volts, you know, straight out of the gap, fully mechanical, no regulations at all. They've gone with this potentiometer style setup, much like the, uh, the Tesla uh, Invader 3. However, they've made it interchangeable. So you can actually run it in series mode and you can run it in parallel mode, you can run it in regulated mode and you can run it in unregulated mode. So in unregulated parallel mode you're getting 4.2 volts, in unregulated series mode you're getting about 8.4 volts, obviously there's voltage drop and all the rest of it in there. But she fucking uh, also does this regulated series mode as well. So you can run it uh, with the regulated potentiometer on there, much like as I said the Tesla Invader 3. You can go from about three-ish volts up to about six and a half-ish volts. I've got to double check the exact ones for the review, but it's about three to six-ish volts. So you can regulate your voltage. However, the potentiometer, which is this little doohickey right here, is completely up shit fucking creek. For starters, it's backwards. So zero is a hundred, and hundred is zero. What the fuck were you bloody thinking, Wismek? Um, did nobody check these? Did nobody look at that and go, "Oh, hang on a second, that's a little fucking backwards"? Apparently, fucking not. So that is a bit of a fucking uh, con in that uh, you could potentially put way too much power through your coils because you fucking 
dial here is backwards. Secondly, the dial itself is an absolute shitbag to uh, adjust. You can't get in there with your fingers. It's worse than the Tesla's. The Tesla's potentiometer is not that great. It's a standard potentiometer on the Tesla, but you know, you, at least you can get a, thim a, a fucking thumbnail in there and, and adjust it. This cunt, you've got to kind of grip it and twist it, and it's just no good at all. But it does have a nice feel to it. I do like the button. The battery interchanging is nice. So look, yeah, pros and cons, pros and bloody cons. I feel like, again, like it's very much like the Tesla, maybe a six out of 10. We'll get to a full review and breakdown and everything you know, in the next week or so, dickhead. So stay tuned for that. But uh, sitting atop it is the Rashomon. This little fucker here, very nice. It is a bit like the, um, the recoil had a love child with the velocity. Because you've got like recoil style fucking posts. Um, and then, sorry, a recoil had a fucking love child with the... Uh, the Kennedy. It's got Kennedy style airflow underneath. It's got these uh, recoil style posts where, I don't know if you can see it here, you probably can't, but there you go. One post or one side of each post is higher than the uh, other. So, you know, you've got um, a negative and a positive and you've got one higher than the other. Sort of like this and like this. So it's easy to slot in your higher leg and your lower leg onto your coil. So I do like that. Um, it doesn't sort of seem to uh, leak like some of the... Um, tsunamis and stuff like that and it does have very good fucking flavor very similar to the kennedy though it gets kind of fucking hot it's a thin metal much like the tsunami it gets fucking toasty anyway let's take it for a fucking burn that is uh, a pretty damn good vape i have to say So there you go, that's the Rashomon and the Noisy Cricket V2, both of which will be coming up for review inside the next week to 10 days, maybe fortnight, depending on how fucking busy I get, but sooner rather than later, dickos. All right, onto a fucking tank, shall we? Have a chit chat about a tank and a mod. Uh, the Big Baby Beast. The Big Baby Beast. I've got a big fucking baby here and that is the Smock Big Baby Beast. It's uh, the tank that's in between the Cloud Beast, the TFV8 and the Baby Beast from Smock. It takes the same coils as the Baby Beast. Uh, however, it's five mils of juice capacity. So a little bit bigger than the three mils on the Baby Beast. And it takes the same wide bore drip tip as the TFV8, the, the, the full size beast which I really like because the full-size beast, the TFV-8, has the same uh, drip tip diameter as the Griffin, as the Velocity, uh, not the Velocity, the Limitless. So the, the Griffin, the Limitless, uh, very similar to the Goon. So a lot of my Goon custom drip tips and my Kennedy custom drip tips, uh, excuse me, why that came out of nowhere, also fit in the TFV-8, the, T uh, the, the Baby Beast, the Big Baby Beast, should I say, um, and the Griffin, as I mentioned before. So I like that the drip tip is uh, a universal sort of wide bore drip tip. It's not a 510, but it does fit a whole bunch of my custom drip tips. So I've got this lovely little matchy match sort of shit going on here, as Grim would say, with the uh, the Tesla, not the Tesla, the fucking um, Evic VTC Dual from uh, Joytech. So the Dual is this... Dual mod, so you can run it in dual battery mode. You slide that little bastard in there. You've got two 18650s. But if you want to run a little bit lower, it does 150 watts in dual battery mode. If you want to run it in single battery mode, well, you take your uh, single battery cartridge. And you Sorry, dickheads, the camera decided to fucking stop recording. I've got no idea why the bastard's doing that at the moment, but it is. Sorry, I was saying the same width as the Evic VTC Mini. Uh, a little bit higher, just a couple of mils taller, but the same size, basically, as the Evic Mini in single battery mode, and then you can uh, swap the fucker back over to dual battery mode, which I really quite like. It is heavy though, it's very heavy. They've gone with some zinc alloy body, very heavy for a dual battery device, very fucking weighty. It weighs basically as much as a, uh, a Wismec um, RX200, which has got three fucking batteries in it. So, it's heavy, but it does feel nice. However, it's doing this again, and it just cut out on me. 
it's misfiring. Every now and again, I get a misfire or I fire it and then it cuts out. I have upgraded it to the latest firmware. As you can see, I put a little uh, fucking cunt logo on there if the camera will fucking focus. There you go, fucking cunt. So I do like that about uh, the, um, the Joytech software at the moment. You can put your own little logo in there. But yeah, even with the new firmware, it's fucking uh, misfiring on me every now and again. Just every once in a while. Not often, but you know. Fucking did it again. It's doing it a bit tonight. Maybe it's the button. Maybe I'm pressing it wrong. Maybe it's just mine, maybe it's all of them. If you've got a VTC Jewel and it's misfiring on you, put a comment in below so I know whether it's just mine or whether others are doing it. But every now and again, the fucking bastard misfires on me. But other than that, I do like it. It's also got a 25 amp cutout. So it won't let you fire any more than 25 amps through it. So if you've got lower ohm coils, you can't push it up above certain wattages. So, you know, like a 0.1, what have I got here? I think uh, this one's 0.22, but I had a 0.13 on here and it wouldn't let me go past like 83 watts, which kind of just pisses me off because I've got batteries that can handle way more than uh, 25 amps, um, particularly in a regulator device, and it fucking won't let me go on my wattage. So, pros and cons against dickheads, pros and bloody cons. I'll tell you what's a pro though, this fucking beer, and I am getting a little bit fucking uh, blasted. Nevertheless, on with the fucking show. Let's go back to mechanicals, back to unregulated devices. The Dot Mod Petrie RDT, sorry, RDT8. The Dot Mod Petrie RDA V2 and the, uh, the Petrie Lite. So it's an alloy Petrie, an aluminum or aluminium, wherever the fuck you are in the world. If you're down here in Australia, and to be honest, you Americans have got it wrong. It's aluminium, mate. Learn how to uh, pronunciate your fucking words. Aluminium body, uh, gold-plated, basically everything. The 510 is hybrid, but your uh, bottom pin is gold-plated. The fire button's gold-plated. And uh, the deck and the posts on the Petrie uh, V2 excuse me, are also gold-plated. So, uh, lots of gold, and I've got a nice little red number here, 22 millimeters in diameter, which is kind of nice because I've got a lot of uh, mechanical mods nowadays are coming out that are 23, 24, and even 25 millimeters. This is a slender little bastard, and I tell you what, it does feel very small in the hand. It's a hybrid connection, it's a small RDA, it's a nice chamber, two poster, it looks nice. It hits pretty fucking hard. It definitely hit, doesn't hit as hard as a copper hybrid mod. I do notice that. But it definitely hits pretty fucking hard. I wouldn't say that it's uh, you know got a, a hell of a lot of voltage drop there. But being an alumin aluminium mod, doesn't hit quite as hard as copper. Uh, and I do like the look of it. It's very light, which some people say kind of feels a bit cheap. And I can kind of see what they're saying. You know, I can see how they might think it feels a bit cheap. But... It's nice to have a light mod as well. You don't always want a heavy fucking uh, you know, mod to take out with this. So it feels light. I do like the finish. This satin finish comes in a bunch of colors. I like red. Uh, so I got a red one. I'm liking it. I'm really fucking liking it. Um, it's going to be subjective. Before any of you fucking uh, you know, cunts chime in, I do know there is a bit of a fucking thing about uh, dot mod the owners getting shafted and pushed out of their company and now it being run by some fuckwits. I don't know the full story on the whole dot mod saga. Um, so look, if you know about that and you've got some links to some actual hard information about what went on with dot mod, I'd be really interested to read what went down there and what the uh, controversy is around dot mod and the owners and whatever else it is and some other fucking bullshit that I heard. I'd like to know for sure. I don't like to go on rumours, so don't just tell me you heard that they're fuckwits and they got pushed out. Of the... like, give me some something to read. Put me a link in there or something. I'd like to read up. I'd like to know me facts before I do the review. I'll do some research, obviously, myself. But if anybody's got any solid information about Dot Mod and what went down there, um, if there's any negative information that I need to uh, be aware of before my review, please put the fucking link in there. Would greatly appreciate it. Alrighty, so that's the dot mod uh, light. 
The uh, Petrie V2, I'm liking them, but uh, that will be coming up for a full review soon. Jesus, we've got a lot of fucking first looks. We're going to be here for a while, dear kids, I reckon. Um, they're going to have a look at the Tarot Pro. The Tarot Pro and the Nalu RDA. The Tarot Pro is, I think it does like 160, maybe 180 watts. I think it's 160. Uh, it's a uh, dual 18650 device. Uh, it's got a very simple um, menu system. It's got a safety sa slash what they call smart feature. And when I say smart feature, I mean smart for dumbasses, but it's kind of pointless for those with half a brain. What it basically fucking does is it reads your ohms on your coils and it does a recommended wattage for those said coils. Now, I put a 0.25 ohm build on here, some Clapton's, and it recommended uh, 45 watts, which is a bit of a fucking joke for these coils. Uh, the vape would have been shit house. It was shit house at 45 watts. I'm running them at 100 and it's very fucking nice. So I like the recommended wattage for those that don't know what the fuck they're doing because it will recommend a wattage that's not going to, you know, burn the shit out of your cotton or wreck your coils. But for those that, um, you know, know what they're doing, it's kind of pointless getting a smart mod, okay? You're a smart person yourself. You know what you're fucking doing. You don't need a mod to tell you what wattage to do it. But anyway, it's got a nice little design to it, a little uh, feature on the uh, finish there. It looks like your kitchen fucking bench top, but... It's kind of nice. It's got a couple of other different finishes to it. Very thin, so it's good for the pocket. It's very uh, slender. However, being slender, it will fall over easily. It's got rounded edges, so there's not a lot of surface area on the base. It's sitting dickheads on just that black strip. The um, the gun metal is, you know, sort of beveled upward, so very easily to fall over, which is annoying, especially if you've got a tank. You're going to crack your tank knocking it over. And you can't put particularly wide atomizers on here, otherwise you do end up with a bit of overhang. So again, a lot of these devices, pros and cons, there's no, you know, most of these don't have anything that, uh, you know, doesn't have any major flaws. It, it, all of them have got some you know, kind of serious cons. But anyway, the Taro, not bad, seems to be working nicely, very fast firing, doesn't, doesn't have any delay, which I do like. So that's kind of nice. The Nalu. Now let's talk about the Nalu. The Nalu's been out for a while. It's not new, but I will include it in the review um, with the Taro because they're both from Vapresso. I didn't mention that earlier, but Vapresso are behind both of these bastards. We need a little more juice on here. Vaping on some WFFL. Woofle. Woofle. Um, it's an almond caramel, and uh, it's not bad at all. I think it comes from a UK company called uh, Vape Spot. They sent me these. I'll, I'll put a link in the actual review, but yeah. Waffle and um, the Nalu is again a Kennedy style slash tsunami style airflow. Uh, under coil, one big sort of air hole on each side of the coils. Two post velocity deck. Got some big coils in here. Kind of getting fucked up by this very brown liquid, but you know, they're going alright. Um, I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all. It's got the window system like the Tsunami came out with this window, which seems like a great idea in theory. However, you get a lot of condensation on the fucking RDA and that means you can't really see how much juice you've got on the coil. So, great idea in theory. Didn't really come out in practice all that well because I can't really see just how dry my coils are um, when there's liquid all over the, um, the fucking window. But... You know, it's there, and it seems to do all right. One thing I don't like about the Nalu, right, so it comes with three different drip tips. It comes with this blue bastard, it comes with a silver fucking cunt, and a black Delrin kind of, you know, I think it's Delrin, but a black fucking drip tip. None of which are a 510 size drip tip, and it doesn't come with a 510 adapter. So, three different drip tips, all of the same size, and no 510 adapter. So, come on, dickheads. Take one of those drip tips out and give us a 510 adapter. What the fuck were you thinking? Not everyone wants to run the same drip tip that the RDA comes with. You want to put your own in there. But, you know, it is what it is. Review on these two will be coming up. All right. Moving right along. We've got, uh, we've got three little mouth-to-lungers. 
three little mouth to lung type vapes, uh, low wattage, um, you know, small, compact little fucking cunts. Now, I haven't really vaped a lot of mouth to lung over the last couple of years. I went to sub oming, you know, about six, nine months after I got into vaping, and um, it was about nine months, I reckon, after. Went to the sub ohm, you know, builds on the, uh, you know, RDA on my mech mods. Haven't really looked back, been, you know, cloud chasing and whatever. However, I've I've tried a few um, Inokin devices, you know, recently, and really enjoyed a higher nick, you know, doubling my nicotine and going a mouth to lung. And uh, so I've got the um, the Serpent Mini 25 millimeter. So the Serpent Mini, which is very fucking popular, but it's a 25 millimeter version, same deck, same design. It's just got more juice. I think it holds uh, five mils of juice now. But I've got a little single coil in here coming in at point, uh, not point, no point, no point, no sub-ohming, dickheads. It's a 1.17 ohm coil. Got her at 20 watts on the Smock HPRIV Mini. A little 50 watt squeeze your fucking tits off. Um, you know, low wattage sort of, it does 50 watts, but you don't want to run at 50 because the battery's going to die real quick. I think it's got maybe 1500 ma, maybe a little bit more. But um, I've been enjoying a mouth to lung. Something a little different. Enjoying that little throat hit, more like a tobacco type, uh, cigarette type vape. Got some tobacco flavors in here. And been, and been enjoying a little bit of a change from my usual clouds bro clouds type fucking vape. Blah. So both of those will be coming up for review. For all those low wattage, mouth to lung type vapors, I'll have uh, the HPRIV and um, uh, Serpent Mini 25. I've also got this little number from Anokin, and uh, I forget what they call it. What is this fucking thing called? Oh, damn it. I've fucking forgotten. The Cool Fire Pebble. That's right, it's written on the fucking side. You bloody numpty. There's the alcohol fucking kicking in. Uh, the Cool Fire Pebble. And the slipstream little sub tank. It's got a 0.8 ohm, uh, 0.84 it's reading, but a 0.8 ohm coil running it at 25 watts. This little bastard here, the pebble, will do 50 watts. It's an internal battery, and again, mouth to lung. Really been enjoying that little uh, throat hit, a little bit different. Again, running a high nicotine level. Both of those, the pebble and the slipstream, enjoying that. So that'll be coming up for you. And also the um, the Smock uh, O Sub Mini. So much uh, like the O Sub and then the O Sub Plus, this is the smallest version in the O Sub series. So it's got the same little hidden micro USB charging port. No variable wattage on this one, so it fires, you know, like your uh, 4.2 volts, you know, and it has a minimum resistance of quite high. I've got to double check it. It's probably like 0.3 or 0.5. Um, it's got some 0.6 ohm coils, I think, in the Helmet Nano. So another ver variation of the Helmet Tank with the Helmet Mini and the Helmet, and now the Helmet Nano. And I tell you what, again, nice little mouth to lunger. A little bit lower ohm coil than the other two, so a little bit more vapor, but again, simple, easy to use, no variable uh, adjustments, comes in a kit, and uh, you know, great for those sort of lower uh, wattage vapors, very stealthy, you know, it's like a pen, but a little bit wider, has a, uh, I think it, what is it, like a 650 or an 800 ma battery, I've got to check all of this, but full review on it coming up. Coils have been a bit spitty in this one, a bit of a spitty fucking cunt. But, uh, you know, again, I might do a little uh, collaboration of all three mouth to lung devices in a review, um, you know, to give you mouth to lung as something to uh, have a squiz at and, uh, you know, get a bit of a feel for rather than the usual sub ohm you fucking dick off type uh, vapes. Cheers, dickheads. All right, I think that's enough first looks. That's a lot, isn't it? We've been here a while. Let's move on from the devices that will be coming up for review. 
let's talk about some stuff that's happening with myself and uh, merchandise. Now, a lot of you who've been following my videos regularly know that I was going to do some t-shirts um, only a, a month or two ago. Unfortunately, I couldn't release the t-shirts. The design that I came up with was kind of stealing a, a certain um, brewed beverage, a beer logo here in Australia. I'm not going to mention the name of it because the logo was quite similar. I just changed the name to Vaping Bogan. Their beer starts with a V and a B. <clears throat> so you can gather which one it is if you're in Australia. And it took about 24 hours, less than 24 hours for the uh, beer company to contact us and uh, give us a cease and desist. So we weren't able to distribute or sell or basically give away or do any kind of uh, you know dissemination of those t-shirts. Um, otherwise we'd get sued and I don't have 200, 300, 400, a million dollars um, to fight a legal battle over a fucking t-shirt with a brewery. So we abandoned the t-shirt idea um, so that I would avoid bankruptcy and uh, and just and just yeah cut our losses. But we will be doing some new t-shirts. I've got a new design. The brother-in-law, shout out to you sir, Tim Warburton Roberts. You can check him out on Instagram. He does do some fantastic art. He's a, a brilliant artist both digitally and organically, however you want to like look at it. But here's a quick look at the new t-shirt design. So there you bloody go, dickheads. A bit of a fucking squiz at the t-shirt design that's happening. And uh, look who it is. I've had a little visitor. A little visitor from uh, the baby daughter, Evie. So um, I know a lot of you dickheads have been wondering how she's bloody doing. And uh, well, she's been doing fan-fucking-tastic. Have a look at this little sausage. You gonna smile for the camera? There you go. A little bit of a close-up, hey? Hey, miss. Oh, there you go. Right. You smile for all the people. Good girl. So, Evie is now five months old. In about three or four months' time, maybe I'll have to stop watching me language around her. At this age, obviously, I can uh, swear me fucking ass off and not have to worry about her picking up any loud language, but pretty soon I'll have to uh, cut that out. But tell you what, she is absolutely delightful, happy and healthy, um, giving us decent night's sleep through, feeding well, and just generally an all-round awesome little baby. So I uh, appreciate you dickheads, uh, you know, taking an interest and uh, wanting to see how she's doing. And uh, I just thought I'd give you a little bit of a snapshot, a little bit of, uh, a little bit of time on cam with the little monkey. So uh, there you go. That is baby Evie. Alrighty kids, I'm going to go and pass her back to her mother and uh, we'll get back to vaping and everything else. You say bye. Bye. Evie, look over here. Hey. <laughs> See you dickheads. So there you bloody go, dickheads. A uh, little squiz at the little lady. Um, she's doing fantastic, as I said. So uh, very, very happy with uh, her progress. And, you know, just thought I'd uh, let you guys know, give you a bit of an update and a bit of, uh, you know, on-screen time with the little miss. But uh, time for a vape. I don't vape around my kids. I do not fucking encourage you to vape around your kids. Not that we know for sure whether it's bad or, you know, okay for them. But, you know, we don't know. So I'm not going to put my kids' health at risk and vape near them. And I encourage you to uh, not vape around your children. Um, we also don't want to fucking normalize, you know, vaping in cigarettes to our kids. So uh, that's why I don't vape near them. But, you know, just thought I'd put that little, uh, little bit in there for you. Let's have a two. Alrighty, so we've done uh, some serious stuff. We've had some uh, some nice stuff with the family. Let's have some funny times. Let's have a little bit of a fucking laugh at this month's Fair Dinkum Fuckwits.
Theory Dink Heads. So, if you're not familiar with what Fair Dinkum Fuckwits is, this is a segment where I basically read out all the moronic comments that I get on my videos. I couldn't give a shit whether it's positive or negative. Well, I do enjoy the positive comments, obviously, and I do read them and try and get back to you as many as I can. But uh, for those idiots that want to uh, drop a, a fuckwit line on here, please do so because it gives me great pleasure having a chuckle at uh, whatever uh, stupidity uh, you've come up with. And I'm sure it entertains the rest of you. So uh, this month we've got uh, the first one from Thomas Spencer. Thomas Spencer says, This guy is a fucking idiot and he looks like one too. I don't own any of these mods. In fact, I've never heard of them. But like I said, he's a fucking Aussie fool. <laughs> fucking cheers, uh, Thomas. And, uh, mate, if you don't know any of the mods that I'm talking about and you've never heard of them, then I don't think you're much of an expert, really, to uh, comment on said video. So, uh, yeah, blow it out your fucking dick, mate. Moving on, the next one is from Revenge. Revenge just says something really simple, and uh, I guess he's just having... Revenge is having a bit of a whinge. He says, uh, stop fucking swearing. And, uh, no, no, I won't, mate. I won't fucking stop swearing. I'm not going to listen to you. You can fucking, uh, piss off, mate. <laughs> Next one's from Big C2323. Big C says, uh, wow, you can swear, tough guy. Why don't you smoke real smokes, you fucking pansy? Um, again, you know, troll, troll, troll your boat somewhere else, mate, because it doesn't fucking work on me. Thanks very much. Oh, we've lost our background. What's going on there? Next one, dickheads, is from Axiom. Axiom says, OML, I think he means OMG, but anyway, he's obviously so angry with his fucking, uh, you know, viewing of my videos that he couldn't even type properly. Watching your videos are cancer, and he does the little emoji. Well, mate, uh, no apologies from me. Fucking suck it, you dick face. Moving on to uh, Hostile Hero. Something is wrong with your style, dude. I don't know what it is, but something just doesn't fit the whole concept. I don't fucking have a concept, mate. I don't know what the fuck you're on about. Uh, clearly, you don't really know what the fuck's going on, but uh, yeah, you're clearly missing the point, so uh, fucking uh, <laughs> go watch somebody else if you're not happy. Alrighty, next one from uh, Vike. N. Vike N says, you're ugly, fucking dickhead. <laughs> you got the fucking dickhead right. Well done there, mate. And uh, if you think I'm ugly, well, mate, we're all entitled to our opinions, um, as you are to yours. So, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, not going to correct you there. If that's how you feel, then that's how you fucking feel. But uh, I got a chuckle from that one. The next one's from a uh, Canadian guy. Canadian guy says, I bet you're a Brexit too. Get a job and give mum a break. I don't know what the fuck you're on about, mate, because I'm not in England. I wasn't involved with Brexit. I think you don't understand the difference between an Aussie accent and an English accent. And uh, you're getting your continents fucking confused. But, uh, yeah. Thanks for stopping by. AJ Krawan, you're up next. And you had to say uh, your... And he used the incorrect spelling of your, which is always a, a great one. You know that they're uh, definitely of the uh, higher intelligence when they spell that one wrong. You're not ard. Stop fucking swearing every sentence. I'm going to say the same thing to uh, Revenge. No, I fucking won't, mate. And uh, your idiotic comment is never going to change anything. Um, I think that's the one thing I love about these, these comments is uh, do they expect to actually get some fucking kind of result from what they say? Because I don't know any YouTuber that reads a fucking comment like that and goes, mm, actually, maybe I need to have a hard fucking look at myself. Fucking cheers, dickhead. All right, moving on to this one's from just he's just smiley face. That's his that's his uh, that's his name. Smiley face uh, emoji. Do you have to say fuck in every fucking sentence you fucking say you f you dumb fucking bitch? No, I fucking don't, mate. I just fucking choose to put fucking in a lot of my fucking sentence because it's a great fucking word. Fuck the fucking fucking. It's a brilliant word. I have a lot of fun with it. And, uh, you know, if you don't like it, well, uh, no one's forcing you to fucking watch. But, uh, once again, cheers for stopping by. Uh, Hugh Vo. Hugh Vo says, uh, fucking stupid, I don't like him. <laughs> if it makes you feel better to leave a comment, then, uh, you know, great, Hugh. I, I, I couldn't care less, mate. Fucking cheers. Last but not least, uh, it's Viking N back again. Vike N is back with his uh, idiotic, you know, little things. And what has he got to say? He says, uh, too many fucks for me. 
I think I think the last one really sums it up. Too many fucks for me. Who cares if it's too many fucks for you? Does does anybody read the comments and look at that and think, hmm, maybe it's too many fucks? Nobody gives a fuck, mate, what you fucking think. So piss off. And uh, well, actually, no, don't piss off. Continue to leave comments because we get a good laugh. But please, it's. <laughs> It's beyond me as to uh, what you fucking think you're actually going to achieve with your uh, with your comments. But um, cheers to all the fair dinkum fuckwits. Uh, you've been a good time, and uh, please do come again. Alrighty. So that was fair dinkum fuckwits. What is next on the agenda? Shout outs. Shout outs. Time for a little shout outs. And uh, I suppose shout outs are just a, a time for me to, uh, you know, say thanks to those that have uh, contacted me, those that have maybe uh, sent me some useful information, contacted me, said something nice, whatever it is. Um, but yeah, just to, to shout you out. You know, if you want a shout out, um, you could leave a comment. I try to read all of them, but I may not see yours. So if you really want a shout out, then, you know, hit my Facebook page and send me a Facebook message. And, uh, you know, I'll uh, probably give you a shout out because I'm. Uh, I'm not a bad bloke, I don't think. <coughs> All right, so first uh, shout out is from, or to, should I say, Tim fucking Herschel. Tim Herschel, there you go, mate. There's a shout out for you. I forget why you wanted to be shouted out. Maybe you just wanted a shout out, so uh, there you bloody go. Next one's for James Learwood. James Learwood, there you go, mate. Thanks for fucking watching the videos. Uh, you got a little mention. So, uh, yeah, appreciate uh, appreciate the viewing, the liking, the subscribing, all the rest of it. Ben Durham. Ben Durham, once again, mate. Thanks for uh, watching the videos and uh, consider yourself shouted the fuck out. Last but not least is Terence. Terence Davis. Thanks, mate, for watching the videos. You, sir, are fucking shouted the bloody out. So uh, thanks for everybody that has hit me up with a message for a shout out. If you want one, as I said, there are uh, ways to do it. You can hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, or uh, an email to the Vaping Bogan. Um, if you've got a story behind your shout out, maybe your wife's pregnant. I don't fucking know, but uh, yeah, if you want a little, uh, little warm fuzzy note from the Bogan, I'm more than happy to oblige. Alrighty, back to the fucking schedule. What have I been up to? What have I been doing? What's the bogan get up to outside of sitting in this corner and making fucking videos? Well, you know, I am pretty busy with the family, obviously with a five month old baby and a five and a half year old, uh, you know, son, Blake. But I do get up to a few other things, you know, in between doing these videos. They take a lot of my time, but I, uh, I work in a vape shop. I've worked for a vape company for nearly a year now, um, basically dispatching online orders and that sort of thing. And uh, we opened up a brick and mortar uh, shop uh, in Blair Athol, South Australia. If anybody is in the Blair Athol region or wants to come down and see me at uh, Vaporize, uh, that is the name of the shop, 472. Main North Road, Blair Athol. I don't want to advertise it or plug it. Don't think it's a fucking advertisement, but I know you dickheads uh, you know, do like to catch up with me. So if you're in South Australia and you want to know where I'm at and what I'm doing, well, you know, there you go. That's where I'm at. Um, here's a little bit of uh, a snapshot of what the vape shop looks like just in a, a quick little video. I think it looks pretty fucking grouse. I have a lot of fun and the best of the bit about it, I'm uh, good mates with the boss. So uh, I get to have a few fucking uh, tinnies, a few fucking brewskis whilst uh, on the clock. So uh, let's have a fucking squiz, eh? Fake shop life, dickheads. It's my boss. Pretty, pretty swish little fit out we got going. Pretty nice. Where's Jeff? Jeff is our, our Filipino import. Hey, Red Horse! Red Horse! Anyway, dickheads. This is where I hang out now. This is my daily day. Giano, man, a few words, much knowledge. Some other slackers sitting on the couch. Say hello, slackers. Don't you have jobs to be at, you fucking dickheads? Anyway, cunts, just a quick little video. This is, uh, this is my place of work. 
Oh yeah, a new fucking hair, how's that? Fucking blondie the kid. Anyway, dear kids, have a bloody good one. It's hump day, Wednesday, couple of days to the weekend. Which reminds me, it's time for a fucking beer. Did you add like a little butterscotch or something on top of it? Oh. There those. Anyway, can't hope you're having a good week. Sorry about the uh, lack of fucking videos over the last few days. Been uh, setting up a new office desk. So I got a new computer desk, which means a new layout for videos. So changing things up with a different background you'll see in the next next video. Anyway, bottoms up, big heads. Anyway, that's it from me. Have a bloody good one. Sub on your dicks off. Sub on your tits off. We'll be back soon with plenty more shenanigans. So there you bloody go, dickheads. A uh, bit of a look-see at uh, life in uh, the vape shop that I work in. Um, I'm sure there might be one or two of you out there that work in a vape shop and uh, have something different, but uh, that's how we fucking roll here in South uh, bloody Australia. What else have I been doing? Well, uh, I went to the Monster Truck uh, Derby, the uh, the Monster Truck Jam, I think it is. It's a bit of a show that tours around. Uh, those of you in the United States of America may have been to a Monster Truck Jam. I know growing up as a kid, I loved the shit out of Monster Trucks. Uh, you know, Grave Digger was my fucking favorite. Loved that fucking uh, green, purple bastard. So uh, I uh, was lucky enough through, uh, through the work, uh, you know, hookups to get uh, selected or uh, invited along to a corporate fucking box, which is the best way to watch any kind of live event. Um, you know, beer and uh, piss on tap, food coming out on platters and uh, V8 engines revving their fucking tits off and uh, lots of fucking uh, rubber, dirt and fucking air. And uh, we certainly had a bit of that. So here's a bit of a fucking squeeze. I took the little man along. I don't think I will be able to top um, that evening for the next fucking 10 years for him. I don't know any five-year-old that uh, wouldn't want to go to a bloody uh, monster truck uh, derby. He certainly had the time of his fucking life. So uh, here's a bit of a fucking squeeze at uh, our evening at the monster truck jam.
me, buddy go dickheads. There's a little, little squiz at uh, what I was doing with the uh, the monster trucks. Do get up to some other stuff. I love to head out to uh, to the football or in uh, you know obviously I call it footy because uh, you know that's what they call it outside of Australia, but really it's soccer here in Australia. I'm a massive uh, Arsenal fan and uh, also support the uh, the local Adelaide United team in the A-League here in Australia. So, uh, you know, for anybody that's into their soccer, I know the Pommy dickheads over there love a bit of fucking uh, footwork. And uh, Americans, maybe not so much, but uh, I enjoy uh, enjoy the Premier League and uh, head out to a few games. So I get up to that. That's what else I do. I also play a little bit of Twilight Soccer myself, a little bit of fucking uh, seven-a-side casual soccer uh, against a few other teams. And uh, that's about it, you know, in terms of uh, what I get up to outside of videos, working, and looking after the family. But, um, yeah, we'll maybe get a bit of footage of me at a, at a, at a game. And uh, I also ride my BMX a fair bit as well, so I might try and get a bit of footage of me uh, having a bit of a bounce around on the old uh, two wheels. But um, that's all I got for you in terms of what I get up to outside of the videos. And I think that's about all I've really got in terms of this month's vlog, bog, whatever you want to fucking call it. Um, you know, all I can really say is uh, fucking cheers for tuning in. Uh, it's a long video, I know, a long, long uh, watch. But, you know, I do this for those that, uh, you know, like to see more of the bogan. And uh, I'm always happy to get in front of the cam and have a bit of a <coughs> shoot chat. But uh, a big thanks to, obviously, everyone that supports, you know, whether it be a, through a subscription, you know, hitting the sub button hitting the like button, sharing the videos, whatever, maybe dropping a comment, always appreciate those. I try to get back to, oh, there you go, there she fucking is. Try to get back to as many of them as I bloody can. Uh, obviously, I get a lot of fucking comments across all the videos, so I can't always get to all of them, but I do appreciate them, and I do read, I would say, a good 90% of them, I reckon, maybe maybe around the 90, 9 out of 10 comments I'd read. So uh, if you want to get in contact with me more directly, if it's really pressing, you know, you can always uh, hit me up with uh, an email or a message. But, um, you know, again, it's not always possible to get back to them. But I do appreciate you when you when you send us an email or a message or a comment. And uh, a big thanks again to our Patreon supporters who chip in. If you want to help out financially uh, with a, a donation, I'll put the links below to Patreon and uh, GoFundMe for one-off donations. But that really helps me, uh, you know, do what I do. And uh, hopefully, you know, we get enough support. I'll be able to give up my day job and do this five days a week. And that means more videos for you cunts. So I think that about wraps it up, dickheads. I'm going to have my last wheel. Grab your fucking beer skis. Fucking cheers. Have a bloody good one. Obviously, sub on your fucking dicks off. Sub on your fucking tits off if you're a Sheila. Mouth to lung your fucking ass off if uh, that's the way you vape. I don't really care how it is that you get your nicotine or your vapor as long as you're not punching those durries. That is all that bloody matters. I'm the vaping fucking bogan, and I'll be back very fucking soon. This week's been a bit short on reviews, but I've had some personal stuff happening to the wife, and that's been sick. But uh, next week, we should be back to our regular you know, four videos or so. So uh, stay tuned for uh, a lot of uh, a lot of products and uh, my thoughts on them. Thanks for tuning in. Have a bloody good one. Cheerio.